Well, good evening, everyone. It's lovely to welcome such a large crowd to our carol service here this evening in Downshire Road to welcome our, our friends from Ryan's and friends from Sandy Street and other places as well. It's good that we can gather this evening to worship God and to sing carols together in praise of the name of Jesus. Let me just make uh, one or two announcements at the beginning uh, of our service. Uh, if you've never been in Downshire Road building before, we have an exiting strategy. So um, as we did this morning, we'll start upstairs at the end of the service, upstairs on the courthouse side, go first rear pews, uh, exit first, then upstairs on the BT side, then downstairs on the courthouse side, downstairs on the BT side. And please maintain proper social distances as you leave uh, the building this evening and just follow the nod from the stewards. And then we, we meet again on Christmas morning out in Ryan's at half past ten uh, for our Christmas family service. And it'd be great to see uh, such a, a large crowd gathering for that. And boys and girls, um, do bring something you got on Christmas morning. Bring some of your presents so we can see them and we can have a bit of fun finding out about them uh, on Christmas morning. And then we have a united morning service here in Downshire Road at 11 o'clock on Boxing Day on Sunday the 26th of December. Our service will run unannounced, uh, so please watch for the hymns. Now that's when we all stand and sing uh, together to God's praise. And there is a retiring offering in aid of the Southern Area Hospice Services uh, as you leave uh, the building uh, this evening, and we thank you in anticipation of your generosity. And thanks also to everyone who has uh, helped to decorate our church for our church services, and also uh, to Keith and all the other folk involved in the music uh, side of things this evening, and our readers uh, who will read up here from the pulpit uh, during this service. Well, these are the announcements. Let us worship God. We read in Genesis chapter 22, verses 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Let us join together as we stand and sing to God's praise our first carol this morning, hymn, this evening, hymn number 330 in our hymn books, hymn number 330 in our hymn books, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We stand to praise God.
Well, let us pray. All-powerful and ever-living God, we gather to worship you in the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We praise you, O God, because in the wonder of the incarnation of the Son of God, your eternal world, word has revealed to us the radiant, of your, uh, radiant vision of your glory. For in Jesus Christ we see you, the eternal God made visible. We praise you, our God, that in the incarnation of the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, we see your mercy and grace toward us who are sinners and deserving only of your judgment upon us. We praise you that in mercy and grace you gave your Son to be our Savior through his death on the cross, to be that sufficient sacrifice for sin and satisfaction for your justice. We praise you that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, that he became like us in all things except sin, so we could know redemption from and forgiveness of sin through him. We confess, Father, that we do not always follow the light of your word, nor believe your good news of salvation in Jesus Christ to be really the best news ever. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sin. And as we have gathered this evening, help us to rightly remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the songs of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Hear our prayer, O God, for we pray in the name and for the glory of Jesus. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this evening is taken from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 2, and then verses 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, for to us a child is born, for to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The seal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. The second reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, 
when no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
worship night and day. A breast full of milk and a manger full of hay. Enough for him who angels fall down before the ox and ass and camel which Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. The shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which are just as they had been told. Amen.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, the Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star, the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen.
the Word became flesh. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning, the Word was al there already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They were reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Amen.
thanks to everybody who has taken part in our service uh, this evening. It has been lovely to hear the Christmas story, to sing the Christmas story, and to hear the Christmas story being sung. And the thought of Christmas draws different responses from different people. Some go mad with excitement and love to tell you how many days it is to Christmas while for others, January can't come quickly enough. Most of us, I would imagine, are somewhere in between. There's a degree of joy to the season, but also levels of stress we could do without. And in all the Christmas busyness, there is the danger of missing the whole reason for the season. And the responses of the angels, the shepherds, and the wise men to the birth of Jesus help us to keep on track to stay focused when it comes to celebrating Christmas. And so for just a few minutes, we want to think about how the angels, the shepherds, and the wise men responded to the birth of Jesus. The angels praised God for sending Jesus. We read about that in Luke 2 and 14. We're told that a great company of the heavenly host appeared in the night sky praising God, giving glory to God because of Jesus. Well, there's lots of reason why we might praise or thank God. Creation, health, safe travels, family, good education, a job, food on the table. But the supreme reason we should praise God is Jesus Christ, the Son of God who was born a baby in Bethlehem and laid to rest in a manger. There's no better reason to praise God than Jesus Christ. Because it is only through Jesus Christ that God has shown the wonder, the true wonder of his love for us, sinful and rebellious and idolatrous people that we are. It is through Jesus Christ that God has shown his mercy and grace, his undeserved kindness to us. It is through Jesus Christ that God has revealed his righteousness and salvation to the nations. For Jesus, the righteous one, the perfectly right and good one, was born to give his life on the cross for us, the unrighteous ones, that we might be brought near to God, brought into a right relationship with God. The supreme reason we praise God is Jesus Christ, for salvation is found in him and no other. We praise God for sending his son to be our savior. The angels 
praised God for sending Jesus. The shepherds investigated the birth of Jesus. Are you curious or are you just plain nosy? If we have been told something extraordinary, we might not believe it. Or we might and maybe want to go and investigate it for ourselves. If I told you that there was a theme park in France that was better than Disney and better than Legoland, would you believe me? Would you ask me, where is it? Because we want to go and see it for ourselves. Well, you can ask me afterwards. The shepherds, the so social outcasts of the day, never to be believed in a court of law, heard something extraordinary. They heard that in the town below them where they were minding their sheep, in that town of David, a Savior had been born to them, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. They were even given the sign, he will be a baby lying in a manger. Well, there can't have been too many of those in Bethlehem. But the shepherds not only believed the angels, they went to investigate it for themselves. They went to see if it was true, and it was true. We know that whatever else we may do at Christmas, however else we may celebrate it, remembering that Jesus was born in Bethlehem has to be somewhere in the mix. We sing Christmas carols. We hear the prophecies concerning him, the story of his birth and those who came to visit him. But I wonder, have we begun, gone beyond the birth, the angels, the shepherds, the wise men, to truly investigate who Jesus is, what he is like, what he did and said and claimed about himself, what his suffering and death and resurrection are all about, and what that should mean for our lives. I think many people like the idea of a baby being born in a stable and laid in a manger. There's something magical, something so distinctive about that story. But they shy away from the truth that this same baby is the Son of God, the Savior of sinners, the true King, the only one who is worthy of our worship and allegiance. The shepherds investigated the news of Jesus' birth and found it to be true personally. And the evidence of that personal experience was their praising God and their sharing the good news of Jesus. Let us take time to investigate further who Jesus is, what he claimed about himself, and what that should mean for our lives. The shepherds investigated the birth of Jesus. The wise men worshipped the infant Jesus. The telling of the Christmas story would not be complete without the wise men coming from afar to seek out the one born King of the Jews, which greatly annoyed King Herod, although we never really tell the, the next bit of that story. But we are told that when the wise men eventually arrived at the house where Jesus was with his mother and father, they bowed down to worship him. We bow to worship a king. And Jesus Christ is God's true king, God's eternal king, the only king we should bow before and worship. And yet sometimes we worship so many other things. We give so many other things the most important place and part in our lives. And Jesus is relegated or resisted or rejected. But Jesus is that wonderful king, that only wonderful king who gave himself to death on the cross, who gave himself as that sacrifice for sin so we could be brought into God's kingdom and live with him forever. Oh, it's too easy, isn't it, to get distracted from Jesus at Christmas? Too easy to forget that Jesus is king because we want to be king of our own lives. We want to be the rulers of our own hearts. And that's okay if you are happy to meet God 
on those terms and try to convince God that because you lived a good life, because you were kind, because you were moral and upright, because maybe you're even religious, you're good enough for his eternal kingdom. But you won't be. Because the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that the wages of sin is death. Yet the, the good, the great, good, wonderful news of Christmas is that the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus. Jesus is the king who loves us, the king who died for us, the king who came to save us. So like the angels, we should praise God for him. Like the shepherds, we should pay him more attention and learn more about him. Like the wise men, we should worship him. Give him his worth in our lives. Give him the most important place in our lives. So how have you responded to the birth of Jesus? Will you respond as the angels did, as the shepherds did, as the wise men did? For only in responding in those ways will you know the true reason for this season. Let us pray. Our God, we praise you for Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We praise you that he is the Savior who is born in the town of David. We praise you that he is the true King who alone is worthy of our worship, our allegiance, our trust, and our obedience. Our God, we pray that we will rightly respond to the great good news of Jesus, born for our salvation, born to give us second birth, born to raise us from the earth. O oh God, over this Christmas season, may we know your grace, and may we know, O oh God, the joy and the wonder of Jesus Christ in our lives, in our hearts, in our festivities, not just at Christmas, but each and every day. Hear our prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake and glory. Amen. And so our closing praise this evening, our carol is number 321, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
a true joy to see so many at our carol service this evening here in Downshire Road. Can I just take this opportunity to say thank you for coming and forgive me for those who I'm repeating myself, but just to wish each and every one of you the joy and the blessing of Christ this Christmas and if it be the Lord's will into 2022. Just to remind you, this section first, this section second, this section third, this section fourth as we leave the building this evening. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day until Christ calls or comes, and then forevermore. Amen. <laughs>